Welcome back, we're kicking off the new week with some mythic Smolderon prog. We get close, but don't quite manage to take out the off-brand Fire Lord. So after raid, we link up with a few friends to run some keys. Having eclipsed the 3300 threshold in the previous episode, we're looking to keep the momentum going into this new set of affixes. So focus up, it's episode 10 on our Road to Mythic Plus title. For this one, we're starting with a plus 26 Waycrest. Or well, not really. This footage comes from a Wednesday. Unfortunately, I lost the previous day's VOD, so we're missing some context here. Luckily, I found a screenshot in my vault. I end up taking the Blackwater Helm and catalyzing it into tier, since my previous helm was on the hero track. I also ran a few keys on the Tuesday, timing a 26 Everbloom, a 26 Throne, and just missing the timer on a 27 Atoll the culmination of which netted me 20 further Mythic Plus score. I might have depleted some other keys, but since I'm recording this more than a month later, and Raider IO only shows finished keys, frankly, I can't remember. But now we're caught back up, so on to the present. This week's set of affixes are very good. We have Storming, a largely non-impactful affix, and Bursting, a stacking dot that's applied when a mob dies, which sounds bad in principle, but it feels like there aren't a lot of big scary bursting pools in this season's pool of dungeons. Maybe aside from some of the pools in Everbloom. And unlike most affixes, it's an affix that gets easier the higher level keys you do. Since adds have so much health, things often don't die all at once, meaning stacks of bursting often fall off naturally between mob deaths. Furthermore, monks and priests have tools in their kit to dispel these stacks as needed. And since both these healers are quite strong in the current meta, it's not too difficult finding one to pick up for some added security. Anyways, to summarize, it's a great week for pushing higher level keys. Now, back to the Wakerest. We have a couple one-off deaths, but for the most part it's smooth sailing and we time the key with 5 minutes to spare, netting us 5 mythic plus score. From there we jump into a 26 at all, and you might notice a lot of the same people are back. We have Moo Cow Steve the Hunter and Vroom Vroom the Warlock, both of which are friends that I've done several keys with before. But we can also now introduce the monk San. The three of us DPS actually met San in the 26 Everbloom we timed the other day. I don't heal, but it seemed like he was doing good healing things in that Everbloom, so I added him to my friends list and we linked up for some more keys the following day. Furthermore, the four of us were all in a Discord call together. This is a big change from the pugging experience I've lived so far, because while I've ran keys with friends, or been in voice comms with people, it was rarely as a coordinated group. This was the first time I felt like I was playing with a team, and as a team we decided to push up our keys for more options in the plus 27 range, which led us to run the Atoll. Like the Wakerest, we have a few deaths to some different things. As you saw, we had a confessor pull where we let a couple bubbles go off, then later, during Razan, I get feared into a pursuit, meaning I get gobbled down. Then before Volcal, we end up butt pulling the trash, which was painful to watch as our tank loses both of their cheat deaths. Later then, during Yasma, I die once more to a spider. With the hunter pets on top of me, I just don't see it. I then take the riskiest res of all time, and we kill the boss, gaining a further plus 4 score. Looking at our key breakdown, of the 27s available, both Rise and Everbloom are pretty tough keys. So we decide to run the Dark Heart in hopes of timing it for a potential 28, and to reroll one, if not both of our other 27s. So we pick up a humongous tank and start the key. We're going to jump to the end of the second pull here, because the tank opts to chain these two adds into the next pack. I shadow step one of the new mobs to start applying bleeds but I don't see where the Razor Beak is facing and Eta Frontal. This was a pretty frustrating death. Because Shadow Step places you behind its target, I assumed the other mobs would be facing the same direction. Especially because with my nameplates, I can't actually see where they're facing. So I was confused why they would suddenly just point the opposite direction. Now in hindsight, the tank was still gathering the pack at this point, which meant they were moving and may have led to the weirdly positioned charge. Knowing this, I probably could have been more careful about it. A little while later then, we pull a pack with 3 poisoners, which is kind of nuts on a fortified week. 
All good, we play it until 3 DPS get the debuff. I cloak mine, and our healer dispels the hunter, but we don't have a dispel for the warlock and it takes them out. Then towards the end of the pull, I get clapped by a nightclaw, but we get through it. Moving on to the first boss, I get turned around as the boss leaps while the tank is moving, and get jumped on. Wait, dude, where are we going with this tank? All right. I was pretty upset with the tank at this point because I was thinking their movement got me killed, but honestly, looking back, this one was definitely my fault. The tank was moving, but planted as soon as the boss leapt, and then I ran into the tank. But we have B-Res, so whatever, I get back up and we finish the fight. Except now, as you might have been able to tell from the last clip, I'm getting kinda tilted. I've had several not great deaths over the course of this key and the previous Atal, and it's starting to weigh on my mental. Later, we play a Dryad with a bunch of Blossoms, I get a Poison Bomb proc, don't see the Swirly, and go down. And yeah, we are down bad, to the point that we've gone non-verbal. As an aside, I really like playing Sin, but the Poison Bomb animation really does make it difficult to see ground effects. This isn't the first time I've died to it, and it won't be the last. Later, we play a pack of three, and as we're finishing off the two Blossoms, this happens. I'm dead. <laughs> Why? Uh, Cyclone into a uh, Blossom. I mean, it's one of those keys, I guess. The tank then hits me with the WTF into the ping, which is crazy. And I get it, if somebody died five of the six times in my key, I wouldn't put it past myself to do the same thing. And uh, at this point, I am out of it. And this is how the rest of the key goes. That's what I mean. That's crazy, one shot. Yeah. Fortified. Just not paying attention, man. I should have cocooned you. I should have cocooned him. Yeah, he cocooned me. I mean, I I live every time with faint. It's such a good I, defensive. I, I, I was just to lost the sauce with storming. Block. He's healing off of him, probably. Yeah, I think so. I've seen a lot of DS tanks do this. I'm a little naked for this next uh, earth shaking roar. I don't know if you have anything. No, I didn't. Okay. You take the B res. If it wasn't already clear, I did not play well. However, my group was able to make up for my mistakes well enough to the point that we still managed to time the key gaining us a pretty sizable plus 20 score. So it's a positive end to a not so positive key, but the tank was sure to remind me of my performance before leaving as well. And I'm gonna play out this convo because I think it's constructive. Damn. The shade. No. Nope. I mean, yeah, a lot of deaths are my fault for sure. Well, that doesn't I mean, feel good to have the Lost DH though. on my friends list if he's kind of a douche. <laughs> I mean, at this key level, you can't really afford to be making these kinds of mistakes, so. Yeah, but I mean, it still happens. Mistakes happen, right? Yeah. We timed, and this one matters. So I wanted to include this because, in my opinion, this is a great way to pick up a teammate. Nobody was overly critical, nor was anyone denying the mistakes I made. We just kept the vibes up. And once the bats were dead, I just was so Dude, we, we are, the death log is literally just a yellow sandwich, dude. Fucking bunch of yellow in the middle of a purple and a green. That's fuck. God damn it, dude. Next, we decided to send the 27 Rise, picking up Giga Mega Chad, the prop paladin tank. Unfortunately, however, during the maiden pull, Giga Mega Chad goes down and we wipe. So we run it back, but then later I eat an orb, followed shortly by the warlock as we stumble our way through this pull. But after these deaths, we clear through the rest of the trash and the first boss after 12 minutes, which is not very quick. The early wipe and the fact that this version of Rise is still in its pre-nerf state means our timer does not look great. 
but we play on and on the very next pull, our healer and hunter both go down. The monk mentioned LOS being an issue. These stairs can be pretty awkward if you don't pull this pack down, and without a healer, our warlock goes down a bit later and this pack takes us a while to get through. We then make it to the double dragon pull where we clue into the fact that we're really not on pace, so we decide to run back the 26. This is like the hardest part of the dungeon. Oh, he's <laughs> <laughs> And during the first pull, Giga Mega Chad is chaining the mini bosses together when the Vanguard adds lag behind, and I then get meleeed? It didn't look like I pulled threat, so not super sure why it attacked me. So I run back, our warlock gets orbed, and later so does our hunter, and then even later, so do I. This trash is brutal. While a lot of these deaths are preventable, having to dodge swirlies, an orb, avoiding frontals, and kick different mobs while the tank is cutting the ads in circles is a lot to juggle. To the point that I think this trash section, especially when we chain multiple mini bosses together, is like my worst performing section in the entire Mythic Plus dungeon pool. But we make our way to the boss, and during a frontal cast, both the tank and hunter try to move out of the way of the frontal, but they move the same way, which ends up killing our hunter. So we commit our battle res and finish tier about 2 minutes quicker than our previous run, which is still a little on the slower side, but still a sizable improvement. We take out this 2-pack and the dragon 2-pack and make our way to the sand area where I pull threat on something and die. It's the only death however as we take out Morchi before heading over to Battlefield, where we end up losing our hunter a couple times to volatile mortar. On fortified, this thing hurts, but we have a couple combat reses saved up so we're able to recover. We then take out the next mini boss, finish off the boss, play a couple more trash packs, and engage Deus with just under 3 minutes remaining. Which is unfortunately not enough time, as we end up finishing the key 44 seconds after the timer. Our run definitely could have been cleaner, but looking back, I think it's very appropriate this dungeon ended up getting nerfed. That ends up being our final key for the night, but we're back the following day with the same group of 4 kicking things off with a quick warm up key as we push up our 25 waycrest, before turning to run a 27 throne. We begin to have issues on one of the early trash pulls here, as I die to a stray lightning bolt cast at the same time that our hunter goes down to a crushing depths. And without us 2 DPS there, this pull lasts quite a while, which means our warlock and monk soon follow. Thankfully the tank stays alive, so we're able to run back and finish the pull. We then have a couple more deaths to the trash, including me going down to a crushing depths, through faint DR and a hellstone. I did have health pot available, which it seems I needed to use. So we engage the first boss, where we lose our warlock to a swirly, and then our hunter, followed by our monk. And neither the DH nor I have B res, so I eventually rot out, and while the DH can finish off the boss themselves, We've fallen a little too far behind at this point, so GG's is called and we run back the 26. Like last time, we rack up several deaths before the first boss, but these are mostly one-off deaths, and we make it to the first boss about a minute quicker than we did in the 27. We blast through this, and the second boss, and head into the trash before the totem boss, where I go down to a nasty storming overlap. We have a couple more deaths, but take out the third boss without any issues and shroud past the hunter pack into a sentry pool, to which we have a couple more deaths during, but luckily it's the hunter and I that go down and we can both stealth back to the group. We clear through the remaining trash and engage the boss with about 4.5 minutes remaining, which should be enough time? We'll also get one more lust. So with 5% left on the boss, surely we've got this one in the bag. Except the next putrid roar takes out our hunter, then warlock, then the monk randomly dies? Meaning I rot out during this burn, and while in almost all other circumstances, you don't even really think about this part of the fight, without a healer and like two of your other DPS, it's now noticeable. However, it is enough as the DH takes us the rest of the way and we time the key with 45 seconds to spare. I've already done a 26, so this doesn't give me any score, but the key turns into a 27 rise, so back in we go. This time we shroud past the first mini boss into a combined maiden and lizard pull, but we lose our hunter to an orb, and after brzing them back up, they go down once more, followed by the monk and then the warlock. 
So we wipe, and after our experience missing the timer in the 26, rather than continue, we decide instead to drop the key to a 26 to run it back in hopes of having a cleaner start. So we play the same pull, but instead of pulling both groups together, we chain the lizard mini boss late into the pull. Since we figure if it means we can play this trash cleanly, it's probably worth doing. But as soon as we chain the lizard in, it runs over our warlock and then I get incapped into an orb. I did have kick available here, but I had been assigned to kick the Magus, so I wasn't thinking I need to cover. The warlock stays dead since they have no way of getting back, while I release and stealth back. Our hunter later also gets run over by the lizard, so uh, not clean, but we play on, and eventually we decide to commit a battle res to the warlock so we can continue to chain trash into the mini boss, Which goes fine until we butt pull an extra pack of Maguses in. I shadow step over to silence them with Garot so they can run in, but the tank doesn't have threats and I go down. Thankfully however, after this death, the rest of this section goes smoothly. So we're going to jump over to Morchi, or well, the trash right before her, because this mob then channels an ability I have never seen before, and it destroys our group. So we spend about a minute running back, take out Morchi, and make steady no fucking way dude progress throughout the dungeon but and i want to point this out the vibes in the group were such that we really didn't think we had enough time to finish the key and i don't know about you but when people start questioning if it's worth finishing the key it definitely weighs on my mental to the point that i'm just checked out and i start playing like we aren't going to time case in point on this last trash pack after we kill off one of the martyr ads I don't bother pressing any defensives because I'm resigned to the idea that it doesn't matter since we're not going to time the key. On my death, somebody asks whether we should continue or not, and our entire group is checked out at this point so we call GG's without really thinking critically about it. Watching this back, this was such a bad decision. Because in the 26 we missed earlier, we were actually slower, and if I hadn't died here, it would have taken us maybe another 20 seconds to finish off this pack? So if we round up and say the trash pack dies at 31.30, that leaves exactly 4.5 minutes for the last boss. The exact amount of time it took us in the previous 26. So I think there are two things here. Firstly, and most apparent, is if you're ever unsure whether you can time, just try and play like it's possible. Secondly, keep the vibes up. Maybe there are people out there that aren't as affected by it but it makes a big difference when the entire group is dialed in and trying to time, as opposed to questioning whether it's possible. And it's kind of a gray area, because it's also a reasonable question to ask. But I guess it's the way you deliver it. I think it affects player performance, or at the very least it seems to affect me. So we run back to 25 and jump into Battlefield. I can't see the earthquake under my poison bomb, which then kills me. We don't have a combat res, so we finish off the pack, get me back up, and engage the boss when our warlock gets knocked by storming into the frontal. I then get hit with serrated blade and we slowly rot out. And while I made a point about not giving up early, with a wipe here, we are 100% not going to time this dungeon, so we call key there. Afterwards, we spend some time pushing up some of our lower level keystones, but nothing super noteworthy so we're going to jump to the next day. We push up a 25 tall Dazar which turns into a 26 rise. So back in we go. This time around, we managed to have a deathless run up until the portal gauntlet, where our tank ends up going down, followed shortly by me as I pull threat. All good, the run back is close. So we clear through some more trash, a loose ad in the back takes out our healer, and then the tank leaves. Wait, what? I was in comms with the mage and healer for this run, and when the tank left, the three of us were genuinely left speechless. I mean, this came out of nowhere. Now, that's in the moment. Watching it back, and I'll let you be the judge, there are two things here. Firstly, apparently the tank was frustrated our mage didn't pull trash over. Now, I don't really play a ranged DPS, so I can't comment on whether that's a normal thing to do, but given how volatile the trash in this section of the dungeon is, I would also somewhat expect that kind of expectation to be conveyed beforehand. As we saw, our tank went down to a pack of 5. Had we pulled extra, the outcome may have been worse. Secondly, apparently I was supposed to start the Chromie RP, where you run over to the portal, 
or maybe they literally wanted me to fly over to Chromie and start the boss's RP, I don't know. The tank was sure to ping me after the fact, but I also had no idea this was the expectation. And apparently that's all the justification our tank needs, uh, as for them it warranted leaving the group. So we run back to 25 and manage to have a pretty clean run up until Battlefield, where I die once again to not seeing the earthquake under my poison bomb. Moving past it, we then just barely run out to the final pack, but the tank keeps the pull going so we slowly get through it. Engaging Deus with 6 minutes remaining, this is plenty of time to finish the fight, if we can keep things together, which thankfully we're able to do, as we finish the key 2 minutes under the timer, netting ourselves 14 rating, and cresting the 3400 mark. It was only last week and the last episode that we just hit 3300, so the fact that we've obtained over 100 rating points in a week is pretty motivating, even despite some of my poorer performances. The fact that we still continue to accumulate rating is a good sign that we're getting better and playing with the right people. So riding that high, we jump straight into a plus 24 dark hard thicket that we two chest and push up to a 26 weight crest. But before running that one, we send another one of the guys 26 at Taldazar. Now this key doesn't give us any score, but this turns out to be a wild key. So we're going to run through it real fast. At the start of the dungeon, we go left and play the packs of juggernauts. Because we have a monk, we usually stack on the trash and the monk's totem baits the charge. This only works however if the entire party is stacked up, players and pets combined. But since we have a demo lock that's continuously spawning imps at random locations around them, if they stack with us, their imp may spawn in an awkward position that enables the juggernauts to then charge them, which may indirectly kill our group. And so the warlock has to stand out from the group and dodge the juggernauts natty which doesn't go super well. Then later, we play a 3 pack of Sarids with a Screamer, but unfortunately nobody kicks the Screamer, which leads to us wiping. Luckily, we're real close to the respawn point, so we release and run back, but that may not have been the correct decision, because we proceed to get absolutely farmed by this pack. Like, straight spawn camped. 12 deaths later, we get through it, but it's not done yet. A little while later, before Volcal, our tank goes down followed by most of the rest of our group. Still not done, because now we're on Yasma when our hunter goes down to a spider, followed shortly by me as I lose track of it on the ground through, you guessed it, my poison bomb. Somehow we still have all three of our combat reses, so the hunter and I get back up, but I'm going to flop once more to a spider, this time having no excuses, just being sure to utilize every battle res I guess. And we kill the boss, timing the key with 28 deaths. So while an embarrassingly poor performance, it's wild we still timed the key. Afterwards we hop into the plus 26 awake rest, and we have a few deaths to random things early on, but the biggest hurdle comes when our tank dies during a double steward trash pull. On fortified, these guys hit pretty hard, so a few of us go down here. But after this pull, we cruise through the rest of the dungeon, just missing out on the two chests and gaining a huge plus one rating. From there, we're going to head over to a plus 27 Everbloom. And while I didn't know it at the time, this dungeon would prove to be a turning point, changing the course of my Mythic Plus journey. So let's get into it. On the first trash pull, a Berserker takes out our Hunter, which means the A-Bomb lives long enough to get another cast off. That plus bursting, plus berserkers jumping around, means we rack up a few deaths to this pull. I also clue into the fact that I'm playing cheat death, which admittedly saved me this pull, but there's no way I'll live through some of the boss fights in this dungeon without elusiveness, so I quickly run out and respec. Then after this point, we lose our warlock to threat on pull during witherbark, so we send a b-res, but then we cruise through a good portion of the dungeon, including taking out the second boss without any deaths. We make our way to Archmage Soul, engaging her with about 8 minutes remaining. Which is definitely a little suspect concerning the timer, but we play on. Until one of the Cinderbolt Storm sets where both the monk and I go down. We only have one battle res at this point, and unfortunately Cinderbolt Storm is not a livable mechanic at this key level with fewer than 5 players alive. Meaning we wiped the next cast and that's key. 
Now, going back to my death, I was surprised I died through both Faint and Crimson Vial. That's a 20% DR with a 25% heal over 5 seconds. Faint also reduces AoE damage by 40%, but I don't think the volley counts as AoE damage, although I could be wrong. I also had Hellstone I could have used, but I don't think I was expecting the sudden 0.5 second interval between Cinderbolt Storm Ticks, and thus didn't react fast enough. And this was a little puzzling. Because sure, I could have pressed Hellstone earlier to play things safe, but the problem is that there exist sets I'm even weaker on than the one I died to. While I'll always have Faint available, Cloak and Evasion are 2 minute cooldowns, and Crimson Vile is on a 30 second cooldown. So if ever I was to plan to use Hellstone, I'd want to use it on a set where I only have Faint available. Case in point, if I had survived here, the next Cinderbolt Storm would have been a good example of that. And this was the first major red flag for me this key, because it felt like my ability to survive on this encounter was out of my control. In the sense that I had to hope on the Cinderbolt Storm sets I was weaker to, I would either A, low roll and not take as much damage from Cinderbolt Storm, or B, hope the healer can keep me alive. And this feels bad. I want to be in control of whether or not I survive. Because if I die, I can look back and say, oh yeah, I could have done this differently. If I instead have to rely on RNG or somebody else for my own well-being, there isn't this sense of things I can look back on to improve. Anyways, at this point, we're not sure we're going to time the key, but we decided to go again to see if we could kill it and attempt the last boss. And this time, things go a lot smoother. The major difference for me here is that we had a total of 6 Cinderbolt Storm sets. I had Evasion or Cloak Up for the first two and the last two Storm sets, and then had Health Pot and Hellstone for sets 3 and 4, meaning there was never a set I needed to solely rely on Faint plus Crimson Vile. The reason this wasn't true the previous pull was because my health pot was on cooldown. After our previous attempt, it felt good getting this boss down, but in the back of my mind I was thinking, well, what happens on a 28? Or on a tyrannical week? Or what happens when I take on this boss without a warlock to provide hellstones? Or with health pot once again on cooldown? There were a lot of ifs that came with this boss kill, that I wasn't confident I could solve on my own. But we put those thoughts aside for now and head over to Yalnu, where we proceed to wipe over and over and over. Now, there were some different reasons for these wipes. There was one pull I didn't use my defensives well, and another pull where I got hit with the adds frontal, but a common point across all attempts, and especially our last pull, is that it didn't seem like we were killing the ad quick enough. And this was the second major red flag for me because while I could survive decently well with correct uses of my defensives, Assassination does not have good add damage. With the way my cooldowns are, it works out such that I'll have good damage on one out of every three adds. But for the adds I don't have damage for, I need to rely on the other DPS in our group to make up for this weakness, and for the healer to keep us alive. And while both the Warlock and Hunter were able to do better add damage than I was, it wasn't enough and we would either slowly rot out, or our healer would go oom. Um. And I'll be honest, this felt real shitty. Because by playing assassination for this boss, I was holding my group back. I wouldn't go as far as to say I was the reason we couldn't kill the boss. For example, I think if we could have coordinated our offensive and defensive cooldowns better, treating this boss more like a raid encounter, we may have then been successful. But again, even if we did all that, what happens when we try 28? Or on Tyrannical Week? There are clearly deficiencies that I bring to the table, and as we try to time higher level keys, these deficiencies will become more pronounced. Perhaps I could justify it better if I was doing meaningful damage in some other way. I think Assassination Rogue can do pretty solid prow damage, which can be good in the comp we're playing. At least I know BM Hunter doesn't have much in the way of prow damage and I'm not sure about demo lock, but in this comp I would often be the lowest overall DPS and also do the least amount of damage to bosses, which isn't really a pairing that you want to bring to a 27 Everbloom. And I won't put it past myself to say there may have been some skill gap in there, maybe a better rogue player could have made it work. But for me, and I've hinted at this before, but I feel like I've hit the ceiling playing assassination. 
I don't see a clear way forward. And when my goal is to push for title, that's not going to cut it. Anyways, after this key, we managed to time a 26 rise, and then later a 27 atoll, while depleting a few other keys along the way. But I wasn't really checked in for these runs. That Everbloom had me questioning a lot about a potential title push. I really enjoy playing Assassination, but would it be possible with this spec? If I were to play another rogue spec, or a different class, I would have a lot of ground to cover just to regain my sense of comfortability with the spec. Could I even do it? Maybe this is the end.